my utmost for his highest. One of the joys about doing these devotionals is that I don't think I would ever have gotten as far as I have so far in utmost <laughs> because it's such a challenging devotional that it's always been a bucket list of mine to make it through one year of reading it and you, you know more or less seeking to apply it you know I mean it's one page sometimes of, of devotional can be years of you know, trying to apply something of a reality that Chambers seems to have expressed you know and, and mentions that you know it, it literally is just probably the toughest book I've ever read as far as discipleship is concerned and it's just a devotional thing so if you ever get a chance I would recommend having one you know always around but today, in devotional, as we sit down and read it and allow God to speak to us, the notion of divine control. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Matthew 7:11. Jesus is laying down rules of conduct for those who have his spirit. By the simple argument of these verses, he urges us to keep our minds filled with the notion of God's control behind everything which means that the disciple must maintain an attitude of perfect trust and an eagerness to ask and to seek. Make it within your mind the idea that God is there. If, once the mind is notioned along that line, then when you are in difficulties, it is as easy as breathing to remember. Just remember, God is there. Why, my father knows all about it. It's not an effort. It comes naturally when perplexities press. Before you used to go to this person and that and seek wisdom or counseling and wonder what's happening or what's going on, but if you think about it and do it, all you need say is, God is there. But now the notion of the divine control is forming so powerfully in you that you go to God about it. You no longer need to seek out those others and contend for some counseling but you find within yourself God speaking to you as you choose to walk with him Jesus is laying down the rules of conduct for those who have his spirit and it works on this principle God is my father he loves me I shall never think of anything he will forget why should I worry the reality of God loving you is what guides the whole concept of our faith in knowing that we can trust him with all of our heart leaning not into our own understanding, so that we could in all our ways acknowledge him and he would direct our path. There are times, says Jesus, when God cannot lift the darkness from you, but you trust him anyways. God will appear like an unkind friend because of trials, but he is not. He will appear like an unnatural father because of tribulations, but he is not. He will appear like an unjust judge because we look on the outward things, but God looks on the heart, but he is not. Keep the notion in, of the mind of God behind all things strong and growing in your faith. Nothing happens in any particular unless God's will is behind it. Therefore, you can rest in perfect confidence in him. Don't let the circumstances of the world dictate your reactions to the world, but God is in control. Prayer is not only asking, but an attitude of mind which produces the atmosphere in which asking is perfectly natural. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Whenever a person lacks wisdom, we're told to ask of the Father who braids not, he doesn't chide you for it or treat you badly because you've asked, but he says he wants you to and he gives wisdom liberally. So whenever you don't know, God says, you should because you could ask. It seems pretty simple. Sometimes it's simpler than you think. It's even childlike. And in this respect, <laughs> it's as easy as just ask. 